As Republicans and anti-imperialists, we reject the notion that one person should hold the power and the privilege that comes, that comes with being a monarch. The monarchy is a symbol of the old colonial order, one that still seeks to maintain power and control over our people and our country. The British monarchy has played a significant role in the oppression and colonisation of Ireland. It was a British king who brought about the plantation of Ulster, which saw thirds of Irish people forcibly removed from their land and replaced with settlers. And those settlers are still here. It was a British monarch who oversaw centuries of British terror in Ireland. And it was a British monarch that oversaw the devastating World War, which saw millions of our people death, starvation and disease. We cannot talk about that monarchy and its role in Ireland without acknowledging the brutal actions of the British Army or of its infamous Parachute Regiment. The notorious Parachute Regiment of which, I have to watch my language here, of which Charles Windsor remains Commander-in-Chief are themselves responsible for numerous human rights abuses and atrocities in Ireland, including the Ballin Murphy Massacre here in Belfast in 1971 and the Bloody Massacre Bloody Sunday Massacre in Derry in 72. The Parachute Regiment carried out these acts of genocide with impunity. And these actions were not isolated accidents, actions, sorry, these actions were not isolated incidents, but part of a bro broader strategy of British state balance in Ireland. The British Army was deployed to support, to suppress the sack and to maintain the control over Ireland. They did so through the use of internment, they fell, torture and collusion between the death squads. Their legacy still haunts our communities today as families continue to fight for justice and for accountability for their loved ones who were killed or injured by British state violence. The coronation of King Charles is a reminder to us all that the British monarchy is not just a symbol of tradition and pageantry. It is an imperial power willing to use any and all means at its disposal. Charles Windsor, Commander-in-Chief of the forces that mercilessly gone down countless emissary citizens will today dawn the extravagant toppings of his empire. He will wear a crown encrusted with jewels pillaged from the many peoples that his stinking empire subjugated, a symbol of his power and domination. And amid all the grandeur and ceremony of the occasion, surrounded by many riches, the representatives of that empire will stand with him to pay homage, and among them you will find two former Republicans. Michelle O'Neill and Alec Maskey, now administrators of his government in Ireland, will deliver their endorsement of his route by simply being there. 25 years after the Good Friday Agreement, we find our fa ourselves faced with a spectacle of two former Republicans standing in front of a king acting as vice royals of empire. Their presence is, an, their presence is an, an endorsement of the very forces that oppressed and terrorized our people for centuries. This is a betrayal of everything we have fought for. We stand here today to reject the trumpets of empire on all those who would seek to collaborate with it, not our king. Not our king! The next speaker here is Colonel McMahuna, was uh, Colonel Youth Movement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, um, Nancy Yard, for hosting today's event. So, Comrades and friends, um, I'd like to thank Lassie Yard for organising today's event and for the invitation to speak. When I sat down to write this, I could have wrote a book about the millions who have died by the hands of British imperialism, the millions of pounds stolen, resources and jewels from all over this world. We would be here all day listing the crimes of these beautiful parasites. But we're here to oppose the celebration of Ford blood-soaked monarchy. It's something it seems that it would be make complete sense to oppose. The list of genocides and atrocities carried out on behalf of the British royal family knows no end. Every corner of the globe has its own dark, blood-soaked story of Britain's bloody imperialist evil. We now see, we now see in our country, former Republicans, people who speak lies of championing the working class, we see them over whining and dining, celebrating the very institution which has caused so much hurt and suffering to the people from this island, from these streets, from our communities. Are we surprised? This isn't the first time so-called Republicans have fallen over and celebrated these parasites. The complete pacification of the Republican movement since the 
British victory to the Good Friday Agreement has left us in this position. Bound to Britain, stuck at a quagmire, still at the behest of Britain's word. You may be thinking to yourselves, God, he looks a bit young to be talking about the legacy of republicanism and where we are here today, labelling the Good Friday Agreement as a victory for Britain and unionism. I am 22 years old, born after the Good Friday Agreement, brought up in a state which I was told had and would progress, would provide me with life and opportunities. I wasn't brought up in a Republican household. The history of our country wasn't drilled into me from a young age. My reality is I've grown up in an impoverished, militarised police state, a sectarian state, one which continues to suppress work-class nationalists. It is 25 years on, a quarter of a century since the Good Friday Agreement was signed. We have thousands homeless, thousands more in housing stress, a crisis in our health service, a suicide epidemic at such a level that more people have died since the signing of the Good Friday Agreement through suicide than the total amount of fatalities during the recent phase of the war. We also have an existential ecological crisis, and on top of all that, throw in Europe's most militarised police force, which uses excessive force and abuses its powers, and that's the arc that a fantastic document detailing those. And now we have a coronation costing over £100 million. This comes less than a month after other warmongering imperialists visited, such as Blair, Biden and the Clintons. Biden's trip cost a total of £11 million, £7,000 for every minute he was here. Meanwhile, the funding to support free school meals, counselling sessions and extra classes for young people has been cut because it cost £9 million and that was deemed too expensive. We are told cuts must be made and I know what we should be cutting. It isn't Sunaks, the Bidens, or the Labour actors, nor the Michelle and Eames of the world who'll be bearing the brunt of it. It'll be us, the working class, and we must take this for what it is, class war. So I raise the question again, what chance do I have? I am a product of my material conditions, and this has led me to socialism and republicanism. I often have more questions than answers, but one thing keeps me confident. It keeps me confident in our struggle, seeing so many committed comrades here today, ready and willing to challenge injustice and imperialism every time it rears its ugly head. Small steps, small wins, a grassroots working class struggle. This is what builds our movement. This is what has done successful revolutionary movements from Cuba to Vietnam. Whether that is through revolutionary organisations such as Lassa Yard, the Connolly Youth Movement, or CATU, the Community Action Tenants Union. A win against the landlord is a victory for our struggle. The resistance of an eviction, the commemoration of our patriot dead, the opposition to fascism, the growth of our movements are all victories in our struggle. Having a chat with you, or having a chat with your neighbour, with your work colleague, your partner, your parents, your siblings, whether you can commit an hour a day or an hour a month, these are victories in our struggle. At an event like today, this is a victory against British imperialism. Please, comrades, leave here today energised. Leave here today and bring the message to your areas, to every fabric of our society. But we are socialists, we are republicans, and we will not stop fighting until we win. I will leave you with a quote. Thank you very much. I will leave you with a quote. As yesterday was the 42nd anniversary of the sacrifice. Everyone, republican or otherwise, has their own particular part to play. No part is too great or too small. No one is too old or too young to do something. Got me the mark. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you,